Hi Notboard Gamers and welcome back to Notboard Gaming. I'm your host, I'm Mark. Now in today's video, we're going to be previewing the weird and wonderful Cosmoctopus coming to us from Paper Fork Games and designed by Henry Audubon. Uh, this game hits Kickstarter on Tuesday the 25th of October. The link will be in the description below and it plays one to four player. Of, uh, one to four players. Obviously today we're going to be concentrating on the solo mode. So what is Cosmoctopus? Well it says here it's an engine building tentacle gathering board game for one to four players and yes it's engine building, there's hand management, there's resource management and what you're trying to do is effectively trying to get eight, oct eight of these octopus tentacles for Cosmoctopus before the private investigator who's a solo AI but you can also use them as an AI in other games gains their eight tentacles. As followers of this enigmatic Celestial Celephopod, <laughs> brilliant. Uh, players will guide Cosmoctopus through the inky realm. A flexible configuration of tiles. Now there are nine tiles that you set out in the game. There are some uh, tiles that you add to it, well one tile that you add to it from four, but you can put them in many different configurations to make the game kind of harder for you as well. Uh, gathering resources and obtaining cards that represent relics, scripture, hallucinations and constellations. By harnessing the power of these bizarre objects and experiences, you will earn the tentacles as you strive to prove yourself most worthy of Cosmoctopus's attention. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is a really simple game to learn. And, it, and most importantly, it's a tremendous amount of fun as well. As you try to gather the tentacles, your eight tentacles, before the PI, the private investigator, gathers their tentacles. So the PI works really smoothly, nice and simple, but starts to build up the resources really, really quickly. So I've got everything set out here for a solo game. So what I thought I would do is take you through a couple of rounds of how it works, and then we'll talk about my thoughts on Cosmoctopus um, uh, at the back end of the video. So without much further ado, let's dive into the crazy eight tentacled world of Cosmoctopus coming from Paper Fort Games, designed by Henry Audubon and hits Kickstarter on the 25th of October. Oh, let's delve into the inky realm. As you can see here, I've got everything set up for Cosmoctopus. First of all, there are these tiles here, these, uh, these tiles that you lay out, and there are multiple configurations you can use to tell you which configurations kind of make the game harder in the rule book itself. There are eight basic tiles. <coughs> which have two icons for each of the resources on there. And then there's one of these special tiles that you're gonna mix in. You see this, my copy, I don't know if, it's, if it'll come with more, comes with four tiles. You randomly select one of those, mix it up, and you've got the configuration there. In the center, you can see Cosmoctopus. And look at this, this mini is just utterly joyous. It's fantastic. Uh, and well, he's gonna start on, there's a particular tile that says start here. So that's where they're going to start. Now here is my kind of, my inky realm. That's where I'm going to collect my tentacles. There are eight spaces around there. And when I get a tentacle, when I can get a tentacle, they're gonna go around there. And the aim is the first person to get to eight tentacles. There are a number of resources and you start off with two resources, uh, uh, two of each resources. So we've got the green ones, the black ones, the, the yellow ones and the red ones. And same for the PI, the private investigator, which we'll talk about in a second. He's going to start on the standard difficulty with two of each resource. But we'll talk a little bit more about that as time goes on. Now here we have the devotee deck and you're going to put three cards out in an array of the dev uh, for the de devotee, tech, devotee deck because you're going to... Uh, times in the game, you're going to kind of take cards from there as well. And you're going to start your hand, uh, you're going to start the game with five cards in your hand. So I've got a couple of black cards here. Uh, I've got these constellation cards, which help you get tentacles. I've got a yellow card here as well. Uh, and I'll explain how that works as we go through the game. Now the game is riotously simple to learn. Uh, effectively, <laughs> you're going to do kind of two actions in the game. Uh, the first one that you have to do is you have to move the Cosmoctopus, and I'll explain how that works. And then you can potentially play a card. Optional, because you won't always have the resources to play a card. Then, at the end of your turn, you're going to discard down to eight. That's either eight cards in your hand or eight of each resource tile. So we can see the various resources. We've got the Black Scripture cards, which use ink. The hallucination cards, which use whisper, constellation cards, which use a star, and relic cards, which use a coin. And then also what you get as well is this handy list of uh, kind of icons that are used in the game. 
Now up here, we have the private investigator. So this is the solar AI. And he's got this, this uh, he's got this kind of card where he's gonna move along. Whenever he gets a tentacle, that's gonna move over. You can see that goes to one to four. On the back end, it goes from five to eight. When you flip over to the fifth, uh, when you flip over the card and, and it gets his fifth tentacle, you're gonna unveil one of these cards. Now there are a number of these cards. You put one down at random. You don't know what it is. It's gonna change how the game works as well. And here on the private investigator card, this is the kind of current card that he's got so if you look at this you've got these little magnifying glasses and that's on red so what we're going to do both these magnifying glasses here are on red if i move the octopus onto those i have to pay him one of these resources you see the aim of the private investigator is to get as many resources as possible when they get to 13 resources they're going to take one of these forbidden knowledge tiles here and that stops you getting it but also what happens is they're going to get two of those uh, tentacles as well so if those forbidden knowledge tiles are available they're going to aim to get 13 resources if they're building resources up and the forbidden knowledge tiles already gone then they when they get to eight resources they're going to get a singular tentacle and what happens is this will then trigger what happens at the bottom here so if it's a singular tentacle what happens is they're going to gain a red resource and if it's a forbidden knowledge they're going to gain two tentacles they're going to gain a red resource and each player must discard one card then you would flip over the next card and what happens is when they reach that there'd be a new kind of set of uh, where the magnifying glasses are going to go so that changes it on there uh, and it, you know you, he's going to start building up his resources again so it becomes a bit of a race against time so here we go we got all the resources we got the tentacles uh, we've got the board set out i've got my five cards i've got my resources down here we've got the private investigator i go first let's play a couple of rounds so i say the first thing you must do is move the octopus or cosmoctopus and when you move him you get the benefits of whatever is on that tile so we're starting up here uh, and you can see i can move down here to red get three red resources, but I know that will then give him a resource. And I'll explain how he builds up his resources at the, uh, when it comes to his turn. Or I could go there and get three uh, coin resources. And I've got, you see, I've got no red cards, but I do have, do we get in some green? Uh, so green is back there, so I could go back there eventually. So here's what we'll do. We're gonna go over here and we are going to gain three coin resources. So there we go, one, two, three. That's it. Now, if I was to play this yellow card, which I can't at the moment, I have to pay, look here, three gold resources or three coin resources plus three resources of any particular type. Uh, so I've got enough to play that. I could play three coin resources and then two, uh, three of any other type. But this would then allow me to fill a constellation. I don't have any constellations on the go just yet. These are constellations here, you can see. So I don't have any on the go yet. So I'm not going to play that card just yet. You can actually as well discount these cards. So say for example, I wanted to play this black card just here, uh, but that's got five and one, that's got three and two. So if I've only got two resources, two black resources, so I could play that by paying my two black resources and discarding a card of the same color. That would pay that and then two resources of, an, of any other. What this does down here gives me a discount of one on any gold cards I wanna play. So maybe I'm gonna do that actually. So here we go, I'm gonna play that card that goes into my engine there, pay my two black resources. There we go, you can see, but it says three. So I'm gonna discard this other black card to get my uh, three uh, black, uh, resources there then what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard three coins because that's one I've got the most of and that gives me a coin discount on anything else so that's my go done now what happens for the PI the private investigator is he's going to get a resource for every card that's up here so let's have a look we've got two he's going to get two coins and he's also going to get a whisper as well so there we go so he's already starting to build up his resources and of course when he gets up to 13 resources of a particular type he's going to take a knowledge token if it's available and get two tentacles so i've got to try and try and stop him doing that so that's my first go done right okay so let's think what i could do now um i could go back and get three resources and start playing my constellations but that's still not quite enough just yet five and two that one that one so what we'll do actually we'll go down here we'll gain a coin resource and I get to get any card from up here. Now, 
Remember, he gets on his turn one of each of these resources up here. So maybe I want to take a yellow one, stopping getting two yellows on every turn. If I look at this, this says that uh, every time I get a star, I get another, an additional two stars. So that's quite a good one. And that one says every time I get an ink, I get an additional three inks as well. And that's quite good. And that allows me to play a scripture from the card row for free. Well, no, here's what we'll do. We'll take this particular card, okay? Now, could I play it? Uh, actually, I could. Yeah, so let's do that, in fact. So I've taken that card. We're gonna replace that. Oh, it's another yellow one. My plan didn't work. So I've taken that card, uh, and now I can actually play this card. So it's three coins and two of any other resource. Well, I know I wanna play one of these constellations, so I'm gonna Ah, hold on a second, just take those three cards back. Remember down here, with this card, I get a discount on gold, so it's two coins actually, and it's two of any other resource, so I'll play those, and I'll play that one. That's the one I want to play down. So that's my engine building now. I've got this constant uh, one coin discount, and whenever I get a star now, I get an additional two stars as well, which is really, really good. So that's my go done. Back to him. Ha! <laughs> okay, so he's going to build up with another two. Now he's already at six there on that, so he's only got another seven to go before he gets to the forbidden knowledge. Maybe I can get there first, I do not know. And he's going to get a red one as well, a whisper. You see how quickly this goes along. Right, now it's back to me. Okay, so let's move over to here, which allows me to get a star. There we go. Plus, because of this, I get an additional two stars. So that gives me four stars there already, uh, five stars there already, and I get to get, take another coin from up there, another card from up there. Um, and here we go. We're actually going to take this card. Uh, it's because I want to stop and get any yellow. So this is the one that allows me, if I play an ink, I get, if I get an ink, I get another three inks on top. Remember to refresh that. There's a constellation gone up. That's good. Uh, and that's my go done there. Can I play any cards yet? Uh, five and two. I can't play any cards just yet. Uh, I do want to play a constellation because constellations allow you to get a tentacle. So back over to him. He's going to get a coin, a red, a whisper, and also a star for a constellation. So you can see his resources are starting to build up really, really nicely now. I've got my five resources there. So here we go, what can we do? Um, I can only get to eight there. I, however, there's a way to do this. Um, no, that allows me to get three. So I'm gonna get three plus another two. That gives me five. Uh, still doesn't get me enough there. Yeah, so I'm trying to get these forbidden knowledge, but you have to discard down to eight. There are ways to get eight resources uh, throughout your turn, but you've got to get the right cards coming out for that. Um, okay, so let's think. I could do with getting some resources, so I could play a constellation. So here we go. We shall move up to here, and I shall get three black, uh, three ink resources. Now, I can play a card now, I think. Uh... That's five and five. I've got five and three there. So this is the only constellation I can play. I can play five of those. I can actually do that. I could do that, but it takes out all my resources. That's a nice one to get. Okay, we'll play that. So we're going to play this constellation, which gives me five, one, two, three. I'm only going to play four though, because I'm going to discard the other constellation at this stage. And then at five of any other resource, that gives me one, two, three for five oops that star goes there and that allows me to play a constellation now the constellations what i do next time i collect these resources in order i put them on there and once that's full i'll get a tentacle i will get five ink and five stars as well so that goes into my little tableau now you can see things building up all right so back over to him we know he's going to get one two and three one two and three is going for 13 not for eight so two four six eight there two four six there and uh, he's kind of building up nicely right okay so what, what what could i do with doing this is good uh if i could play this card and get some resources this would allow me to automatically fill slots basically oh we like that so we're going to go over here and we'll get three of those 
Got three resource, three of those now. Still not enough to play that card. Nah. So back over to him. You can see the game whips along at such a great pace. Here we go. So one, two, three. So we know he's got two, four, six, eight, nine now. So he needs four more and he's going to get that token and two on there. Okay. So now it's back to me. Now this will then allow me to do it. So here we go. We're going to move over to here. Remember, I've got this card, which says every time I get a star token, I get an additional two. There's three on there, so that's going to give me five. One, two, three, four, five. So there we go. Now, I do want to say that there are these multiply tokens. So if you get start bringing out tokens, you can put a token on there and say you've got five of those, basically. So you can use those in the game. So that's five. And now I can play a card. So if I play this card, it's three coins. So it's two coins because I've got my one discount. There we go. And then it's three of any other, so I can pay those. There we go. I can play that card, which is going to go away, but it allows me to fill the spaces up, star spaces on here um, from, uh, from the bank, basically. So I can play that card, take these two stars. My constellation is getting close to being filled. There we go. You can't use, uh, when you get those constellation cards, you can't use resources you've already got. And you can see, I've got a game starting to come together now. So one each of these, and this is good. That, that top row is doing me well at the moment because it's only adding one of each. It's when they start filling up with multiple copies, but I've only got one card left. So, uh, what to do, what to do now? So I can move Cosmoctopus one space. Unless I spend a resource, I can move him an additional space. If I move him to there, I can fill this up here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna spend a resource. We're gonna move in two spaces, one, two. Get three of these. One, two, three. And those inky ones, you can use any number of the resources you get, will allow me to do that. And therefore that constellation is full. What happens now? Well, here we go. We return the resources to the bank, to the supply. And now we complete what it says on the bottom of here. And what does it say? I get a tentacle. So you get one of these wonderful tentacles. You put them on your board. There we go. And I also get five ink and five stars as well. So one, two, three, four, five ink. There we go, which is nice. And five stars. One, two, three, four, five. So we're building up nicely some resources there. That Card is now discarded, but that's good. I've now moved from there, but he's going to move on as well. So we've got uh, two, four, six, eight, ten there. It's going to take one of each. One, two, three. There we go. And it's starting to build up his supplies very, very nicely. So that would carry on now. We would carry on taking turns after turn. And then what would happen when he's got 13? So let's say he's got 13 coins here. What's going to happen is that they... They're going to go back into the bank. There we go. So he doesn't discard down to eight at the end of his turn, unlike you do. And we're going to move that tentacle on one. And then we're going to action this here. So he's got 13. We're going to take the Forbidden Knowledge token. He's gained that. It's going to gain me two tentacles. So there we go. Well, no, we don't get those. We'll move that up there. That goes there. Uh, and we've got this one. It's going to gain a red resource. There we go. Uh, and each player must discard one card. I've only got one card, so there we go. That's discarded. So that card is now done. What you would do is flip over the next card and you would go again and continue and he's gonna start building those up. So remember, he's got two tentacles, I've only got one. You can see the game starting now. The end of the game comes when whoever reaches eight tentacles. If I get there first, great, I've won the game. If the PI gets there first, I haven't won. That, in a real kind of, Lightning, uh, lightning uh, kind of whistle, uh, whistle stop tour. That's exactly how you play Cosmoctopus. So easy to play, so fun. I'd say you can move these kind of configurations around all that you want. There we go. There we go. You could do that, which gives it a kind of a loop. You can make a figure eight if you wanted to out of them in, in some sort. Basically, that you know, you could do a zigzag if you like. Uh, you can create little shortcuts to, towards places. You can do it exactly how you want. They move orthogonal, and the rulebook gives you kind of various ways that you can uh, set set the game up. Now, one of the things I want to mention about this is when you flip over the new card for the PI, the magnifying glasses move 
to that particular resource. And there we go. So if I move on to that resource, what's going to happen there is that I would have to pay him, uh, sorry, onto that tile, I would have to pay the PI one of those resources. Once this has got to five, you flip this card over, and as I say, these are randomized. It says here, if you want to move Cosmo Octopus onto a realm, uh, investigated inky realm, so one that's got the magnifying glass on, uh, you must now give them two matching resources. So that game is the end game for there. It's going to start really zooming up for the for the PI. So kind of strategizing in the early game and trying to get as much done as possible in the early game is really important. There we go. That's how you play Cosmo Octopus. Ah, and there we go, not board gamers. That is Cosmoctopus from Henry, Henry Audubon, coming from Paper Fort Games, coming to Kickstarter on the 25th of October. The link will be in the description below. I like this game a lot. It's dead easy to teach. It's the kind of first game you're going to play at a gaming night or when you've got your family or, you know, over Christmas period, etc. Um, my wife and I have recently bought a mobile home, an RV, so it's one of the games that's going to be going in the RV for us to play when we're, uh, when we're out, etc., so simple to play, but there's a lot of depth here. These cards are so much fun as well. There's some real Easter eggs hidden in these cards. And because it's such a big deck, waiting for those cards to come out becomes kind of really, really important for you. Now, the solo game uh, plays slightly different to the, um, uh, to the multiplayer game in the fact, of course, you don't have to have the PI in the multiplayer game. And also there are some starting cards that you can kind of get when you get your first tentacle. You don't get those in the solo game. But the table, the footprint, the kind of footprint for this game is, you know, it's really good. This is half my table, basically. I've got it spread out so the camera could see everything. So you can play it on a relatively small footprint. The key thing about it is the game will play in around about 25 minutes. And you can play, easily play a couple of games on the bounce and have a great time playing it. And is it too light for some people? Possibly on the surface, but when you then start digging down into strategize and you could see that me, you know, I was trying to build up my resources, I started to get a bit of a game plan or a short term game plan. I didn't want to start cycling through the top of the deck, soon, uh, through the cards in the offer too much because it was only adding one of each resource onto the PI. But at some point, as you saw, I went down to my last card, I had no more cards to, to play. That meant I would have had to then build a strategy where I was going around and collecting cards, which gives you greater options, which gives you more chance of actually achieving uh, the eight tentacles because you're going to need those constellations to get to the eight tentacles or to build up your 13 tokens of a particular type for forbidden knowledge. Now, you might say, hold on a second, you've got to, you've got to get it down to kind of eight. How is that going to happen? Well, you saw one occasion where I was building up these stars. If I'd have got eight stars there, then moved on to this tile, which gave me three stars, and I also had this card, which allowed me to get another two whenever I got that. That would have given me 13. I could have spent those and got a green forbidden knowledge. There's also other cards which might give you eight, uh, eight resources at any one particular time. Um, I think if you've got uh, anybody who's got a mild interest in board games or wants to play, it's a 10 minute teach uh, for the game. It makes so much sense once you start playing it. I think you'll have a really good time with them. It's a great way to get people thinking about how different cards play. I, I, I do like you know, the, the fact that you don't, you've don't got the shifting configuration of tiles when you set the board out. It's never really the same way twice. And you can move that configuration around, have different uh, different kind of, of um, a different layout on there as well, which is really, really good. It just means that the game has got this endless amount of replayability. Some configurations are going to be harder than other configurations. And I say you've got these other inky realm tiles. You're only going to shuffle one in. Uh, there's only four here, but maybe there's more coming out in the Kickstarter if it's successful. Who knows? The PI, the, uh, the solo AI, so easy to manage, so, so easy to manage, and it feels like it's a part of the game. You feel like you're kind of, you know, you're, you're racing against somebody, and I think that's really important is a game, each game that has a solo mode deserves a solo mode that mirrors its complexity, and that's exactly what this PI does here. It's silky smooth to implement. I'd like to see a bit more variety uh, in these cards, and I'm sure more will come out in the Kickstarter stage. Super silky to run though, makes total sense to run, uh, and you know exactly where you are at each point. So uh, for me, Cosmo Octopus uh, out of nowhere has become a big hit, uh, certainly for me, and certainly in my household as well. My wife's played it a couple of times, I've played it with my kids as well, who really aren't board gamers. A 17 and 16 year old girl, uh, really not board gamers. We had a lot of fun playing this. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely one that's gonna stay in my collection. So it's the idea of a solo hand management resource 
resource management fun game where everything feels thematic, um, uh, kind of appeals to you. You can play it solo with no problem whatsoever. You can play it with up to four people, you know, say parties or uh, uh, you know, kind of dinner parties or board game nights or at your board game club. Uh, play at the beginning or the end of the night. It's absolutely ideal for that. Utterly love uh, Cosmoctopus from uh, Paper Fork Games designed by Henry Audubon. Theme-wise, gameplay-wise, everything just utterly clicks. So make sure you check out it when it launches on Kickstarter on the 25th of October. So thank you very much for joining me on this journey through Cosmoctopus, how to play the solo, or my interpretation of how to play the solo. If there were any rules, uh, errors made, then do apolo I do apologise, um, but uh, you, I'm sure you got the basic gist of the game. Uh, make sure that you... Check out our other videos. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching this. Check out the Kickstarter. My name's Mark. This is Not Board Gaming. One final thought. If you've got no one else to play with, there's nothing wrong with playing with yourselves. <laughs> Until next time, bye-bye.